Well, Tom, we've already traveled a long way, but it looks like we've got a little further to go up on this ridge. Can you get a reading on those chamois up on the hill? 1,192 yards. Well, you can see pretty quickly why these optics come into play. I mean, you don't want to have to be walking these hills if you're not going in the right direction. Obviously, this country is beautiful and rugged, but these animals are living up on top of these mountains and the weather that they've got to deal with and just the fact that they can live and, and flourish up there is, is amazing. They look mighty small from here, <laughs> a little better than the spotting scope, but we're going up that high. Welcome to Austria. <laughs> the Tyrol, where Dean Capuano and Swarovski Optic North America's senior tech specialist, Tom Hogan, have come, lies in the rugged mountains of Western Austria. There are few places more stunning and picturesque than the Austrian Alps. For centuries, this was part of Europe's great empires from the Roman to the Holy Roman and the Austro-Hungarian into the 20th century. One of the nice things when coming on these hunts to Europe is the other facets of Austria that we get to see. There is a history over here that goes back thousands of years. There's just so many things that are so old and, and you can see why some of these traditions in Austria have developed over thousands of years. This tomb has 28 over life-size statues in bronze. Wow. We got the chance to go to Emperor Maximilian's tomb and there's statues and artwork in there that date back to the 1500s and he told the so story the way that he yes, wanted it told. Really then we leave there and get on a cable car and go to the top of the Alps to have some lunch and there's just such a wide array of things to do and see in Europe and again it's, it's that old world combined with the new way of living and it just really makes Austria just a wonderful experience. The hydroelectric power from the high mountains was why Swarovski was founded here more than a century ago. Today, it's one of the most advanced optics plants in the world, with all its own manufacturing and testing facilities, including an indoor shooting range. So Tom, we're really excited to be over here in Austria, and HS Precision really stepped up this week. They got us this rifle delivered over here, which made it a lot easier for us, but all set it in with a Z6, two and a half to 15, 44 with our BRH reticle, so. Tom, you're like a half inch low, so let's go ahead and bring that up. Okay. Perfect, I think we're ready to go. We do a lot of other hunts throughout the year, but this one in Austria is just something special. You get to come over here and visit the factory and see product that we've watched go through research and development, production, assembly, quality control, and really just be assured that each and every piece and finished product that goes out the door is in great working condition. But then to be able to come up in these mountains in the Alps and use it and see it put to the test is, is just a wonderful experience. The top big game of North America includes sheep, elk, brown bear, moose, and the white-tailed deer. In Europe, the list of most sought-after animals would have on it red deer, wild boar, ibex, and here in Austria, chamois and roe deer. Hunting in the Alps is such a unique experience. Obviously, we get to come over here and see animals that we're not used to seeing, but it's more about age-old traditions, scenery, and things you get to experience here that they've been doing for thousands of years. The first morning of the hunt, we met Albert. You know, we knew right away that Albert was a, a seasoned hunter that has been hunting in the Alps for many, many years. Easy, nice and easy. Don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. We came over this little rise, and all of a sudden, it was like the Valley of the Chamois. You know, there were probably 12 to 15 animals in there. Right up here. Okay, I see it. It was uh, just kind of amazing to me to see the number of animals that we did, and we'd see animal after animal after animal and Albert would say no good and, and pass upon this one. We must have seen 30, 40 animals before we found the right one to shoot. His body language was what we wanted to see for the last couple hours and he called us up and, and right away he knew this was the, the chamois that Tom needed to take. The left one. The left one. Hey Tommy's the one on the high left. High left. Gene, how far is that? It's 145. So as Tom got ready to make the shot, you know, everybody starts to get nervous. And, you know, I, I know Tommy, he was very focused. And as we looked at that chamois, he was up in that rock, and it was, you know, a scene out of an Austrian postcard. And okay, I got him. I was breathing pretty heavy, and uh, my adrenaline was flowing. I'm going to take him. All right, take your time whenever you're ready. Nice 
nice shot. Nice shot. Tom. Oh. Nice shot. <laughs> nice shot. Oh my God. When Tom took the shot, he broke it perfect. And you know, to see that chamois fall and to see that go down, just, you know, it was a huge sense of relief for me. And I'm sure it was for Tom, but it was just a great moment. Well, Tom, this is what you come all the way to Austria for. Come, glad my side. Wide dunk. Thank Very you, Albert. Good shoot. Thank you, Albert. 14 years old. 14 years old. Wow. Well, that's the one Thank we're, you. we're looking Thank for, the old ones. Good job. Thanks, Dean. Wide ones dunk. Okay. Thank you. The opportunities to see history here in Austria are just amazing. We visited the Grossmeyer Bell Factory, which is the oldest bell factory in Europe. They had a bell there that was manufactured in 1493. And, you know, I, I can't really describe the feeling you get of putting your hands on something that was manufactured in 1493. Have you ever had your hands on something that old? I don't think so. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Wow. There he goes. After the Bell Factory, we got to visit the site of the Olympic ski jump. And you know, for a lot of us in the US who watch those events on TV, you don't really get a full appreciation of the air that those guys get under their jumps. It, it was just amazing. That is pretty awesome. Whoa. What we haven't told Tom this week was we're really not down here to hunt. <laughs> we came to give you ski jumping lessons. Oh, yeah, right. So hopefully you've stretched out and you're ready to go. Oh, I'm all ready. So for my chamois hunt, we had the opportunity to take a class three animal. And what a class three animal is, is, is a chamois that's grown pretty much to its full potential and it's not going to get any bigger horns. And it's an animal that they like to take out of the herd. And a lot of times we go on these hunts and you're always looking for the biggest, but now in this situation we're really looking for a specific animal and it makes it more challenging and you see pretty quickly why optics come into play. And We came up over this one little rise and we saw an animal that was a few hundred yards off. So we worked our way up the hill just a little bit longer and we got into that 150, 200 yard range and at that point we could really tell that this was the animal we wanted to harvest. So he's the one standing right there, right? He's standing by himself. Yeah. All right, with this fog coming in and rain, I think I'm gonna take this shot. Tom, how far is he? 149 meters. The one thing that was a little bit different with this Shema was he was alerted to our presence and then it really started to rain pretty hard. I'm just gonna see if he turns broadside a little bit, but I can take the shot. It's okay, you can do it. Okay. Between the fact the pressure of the shot and the weather coming in, uh, it really made for a pretty intense couple of moments. Nice Ooh. shot. <laughs> <laughs> nice shoot. Nice shoot. <sighs> on the same hill. On the same hill. <laughs> and you're right. We can't get much higher no. than this. No. You know, you can be as calm as a as you want walking up this hill, but when it's time to take the shot. Oh you yeah. Can't help but get nervous on these guys. Oh I know. That was a great shot though. Excellent. Weidmann's head. Weidmann's Tom. Tom, this tradition's been around thousands of years. It, it kind of symbolizes giving the animal his his last dinner and that's the really nice thing for me coming over here is, is the history and the tradition and, and you know the respect that they show for the animals and you saw it this morning all the chamois we should oh, saw yeah. on these hills and they really take the time obviously with the optics to to pick out the best trophies to take whether it's the older oh, ones or you know the younger ones that aren't going to be as big of a chamois but uh, you know in the end they really balance the herd and, and that's why you saw it this morning we just saw tons of chamois is that the biggest climb you've ever had Absolutely, that's the biggest climb I've ever had. <laughs> My leg muscles are burning right now. You got muscles that hurt that you didn't even know they were muscles. <laughs> I think you're right. So roe deer hunting is a little bit different. You're not as high in the mountains and we're hunting a lot of the fields that are a little closer down to the valleys. In the last couple of days we had spent kind of in and around these fields really looking for roe deer. And one of the nice things was spending some time with Albert to really see the terrain and, and the places that these things live and move. And one thing that Albert had said to us was he wanted to get the roe deer as soon as possible because it's late September now and the antlers start to drop off right now, early October. So 
That was one of my big concerns. Well, Tom, we've been looking for roe deer all afternoon, and yeah. this field they've been spotting a really good buck in. So we're gonna just kind of ease down here along the edge and just watch this big field for a while. The weather's been bad in the last 24 yeah. hours, so we're hoping as it clears up a little bit, uh, they'll hit the field and try to get something to eat. It really came down to that last day, as a lot of hunts do, to, to hopefully get Tom a chance at this road deer. This field's right down in here. Let me look here. Okay, so we'll just kind of ease up to the edge and, and have a look in. The weather had broke, the snow was on the ground, but certainly the skies had cleared, so it just looked like one of those evenings that deer were gonna move. Sure enough, when we saw those horns of that roebuck, it was like a whole different level of energy kind of zapped us all up, and you know we got pretty focused to make sure it was the right one we were looking for. And pretty quickly, we sized them up and knew that this was the deer we had been waiting for the last few days. Tom. Dean, how far is he? He's 200. Just wait till he turns broadside, wait till you get a good shot. I see him. Nice. You dropped him right in his tracks. Oh. <laughs> you got a little wet on that one, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I did. Oh, that was good. <laughs> well, that's what we come to Austria for, Tom. Great shot. It was well worth it, thank you. Great shot. How old is a roebuck like this? Uh, maybe six, seven years. Excellent. Six or seven years old. Excellent. Well, Tom, here's the age-old tradition of, you know, feeding the animal their last meal and showing respect to the game over here. Come, right man's head. Wiseman Dank, Albert. Thank you. That's something you've been hearing about working for the company for oh, a long yes. time. Oh, yes. Many years now. Now you get to experience it for yourself, and it's a great roebuck. It's a gorgeous animal. As I've gotten older, I've really learned how to enjoy the process of the hunt a little bit more. And you know, you really get that feeling over in Austria. And this week, spending time with Tom and his enthusiasm for what was going on here all week really kind of rubbed off on me and it just made it such a pleasurable experience. And you know, the hunting combined with everything that we saw in the factory and you know, everything else that Europe has to offer, like the history, the scenery, and, and everything wrapped into one really makes Austria just a, a great place to visit. That's a good day of Austrian hunting. Oh, it sure is.